What is the largest Muslim country in the world? Indonesia. 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 So, Pinchak Silat, the history of Pinchak Silat comes before Islam. And I'm going to talk a little bit about this. But when the Muslims came to Indonesia, they actually used Pinchak Silat to spread Islam. You want to you learn the art? You want to learn our secret art of Pinchak Silat? You got to become Muslim. So they used it uh, as a way to actually spread Islam. And we know it is the largest Muslim country, so it must have worked. <laughs> Obviously, there were other means that they did, but this was one of the ways. Um, Pinchak Silat comes many, many centuries old. There are many, many forms of Pinchak Silat. All, there's so many different islands of Pinchak Silat, each one has their own form. What they've done in the last 30 years, they have this organization called Pikatan Pinchak Silat Indonesia. And this is the official patch right here. And it unifies all the Pinchak Silat, and they have one form that they have took, taken from all these different styles of Pinchak Silat. It's called Juruf Tunga. Tunga means the single form. And this is what's done in traditional Pinchak Silat form. This actually has three parts. It has one open empty hand, one um, machete, and one, um, uh, we call it toya, which is a staff, the long staff. I'm only going to do the open hand one right now. Everybody's seen this, okay? 
Now, most of you guys have that in Taekwondo, karate, other moves. The style, why we do it is a little different. If you can watch, see if you see the difference between Art to Dang Ante, side kick, and the traditional one. Any, any, any differences do we see? Like, I'm, this part I'm learning too. So I'm, I want to learn maybe from other from masters. One of the main differences that I have witnessed is how we, we uh, protect. block down when we're protect kicking. The groin. We protect our kick. From the front kick, we always are protecting down here, okay? That's one difference. We have so many moves, we have locks. Um, I came, a lot of my students were out of town this weekend, but we have locks where we grab and we take down. One of the things that makes Pinch Axi Lock very unique is our sweeps. So we have a lot of sweeps. I would like for you all to go and look up when you go back Pinch Axi Lock and see how they do tournaments. There are official tournaments. Alhamdulillah, I was actually went to the World Championships twice representing the United States as the only member of the Pinch Axi Lock. And I participated in um, sparring and what they call judo reforms. So I was beaten the first round. These guys are amazing fighters. <laughs> but the experience was very great. On the first time, the first I went up against the top fighter from Malaysia. And so, you know, Malaysia is one of the four countries that I mentioned. Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, and Brunei. So, when you watch these videos on YouTube and see how Silat people fight, you will notice there's a lot of sweeping. And you will think, well, it's kind of, is it effective? Can you really sweep? I just want you to watch. You'll see a lot of Silat people will come, boom, next thing you know, you're off the ground, okay? Another Silat move we have is called Guntigan. I think maybe if you guys have it, you'll actually jump up in midair and trap them and knock them down. So from here, boom, okay? So you're grabbing the person and flipping them over, okay? We have so many moves here. We also have our own system of fighting on the ground, but it's not really on the ground. It's not like grappling. I'm studying grappling now. We never have, in see lot, our backs to the ground like this, you know, like we do in grappling. Ours is always upright, and the reason is because multiple points. You know, so we have locks, we get down, and that type of thing. Lastly, I don't want to talk too long. We have, I would like to pass around, oh, this traditional, um, it's normally uh, what the Malay people wear in formal uh, gatherings. It's called a sarom, sarom, and men and women wear it. And it's kind of like in the United States, you have a bow tie, you wear it. Some people wear the long sarong and they wear it to prayers. So it's actually a prayer, uh, 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 um, the long one is a gown they wear to prayer. That is also a weapon. So this one would go, would be long, so this it doubles like this. They wear it around to prayer like this, okay? This one is just for competition, so it's Velcro. <laughs> but this one is a traditional one. So when you take it off, it becomes a weapon. Okay? You wrap it once here, you wrap it twice here. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not a master at this. Only a very few real masters at the saddle. I'm still a student of knowledge of the saddle. But one of the things that they use, they put fish hooks at the end of this. And when they're coming here, you know, boom. Make a rat tail. Right to the face, okay? They wrap it real tight, boom. Also, wrap it once, wrap it twice, block here, you can disarm the weapon from here, pull, and take the, 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 uh, your opponent down. Many techniques, you attack here, wrap around the leg, pull. But this is actually a weapon. So when you see a Silat person wearing the sarong, not just for beautification or like a skirt or something, no. It's actually a weapon. The last weapon, and then if anybody has any questions, because not many people know about Silat, and especially at a Muslim martial art event, it's important to know about this martial art that is. Um, my school is actually based out of a masjid in Al-Azhar. It's 
called Al Azhar Pinchak Silai. So it was actually founded inside of a mosque in the heart of Jakarta. If you have any questions, but the last thing I want to mention is the beauty about Pinchak Silai, as I said, it was before Islam. So there, were, there was obviously, you know, when the Prophet ﷺ came to Mecca, there was a lot of jahiliyyah. And what the Prophet ﷺ did, he took what was good and, and he kept what was good. Whatever was good of the tradition, he kept. He didn't just throw, blow away everything. He took what was good and he left it. And the things that did not, was not positive, what was part of the jahiliyyah, he did away with. This was the beauty of the message of Rasulullah This is a very traditional weapon. Has anybody seen this weapon before anybody? It's called a kris. Kris, okay? So in the old, before Islam came to Indonesia, the kris had a lot of, how would you say, superstition along with it. You know, a lot of superstitious stuff. So as Muslims came, and I'm going to have, this is not really that bladed, but I would still keep it out of the hands of the, uh, um, the youngsters. You, I want you to look closely and see what they did to try to push away all of the superstitions that go along with weapons, go along with uh, some parts of Silat. So if you would see, it might take a while to get around, but you will see that there is Ayat al-Kursi written on there as part of the, uh, <coughs> as a part of a way, even though this is, is, this is an ornamental piece, so you're not gonna, they're not going to actually be fighting with it. But this is a way to um, to clean up this tradition that goes very far back. Um, there's so much to say on Pichak Silat. We also do have belts, so they, if you, it's not, we don't always wear this. In fact, I only wear this for, for performances. So much to say, but I don't want to take to, any, any questions. Any questions about Pichak Silat that I can answer? If not, I will. I have a question. Yes. Um, is it taught around here? <laughs> Very good question. Um, yes, we have two schools, actually three. We have one at the Embassy of Indonesia. We have one in Bethesda from our particular branch. And then we have, I teach one out in Ashburn, Virginia, um, the Dallas area. So we have three, three schools of Kim Chaksin. Yes. Do you know other We do. So traditional, traditional uh, pipjak sila from the kampong, which means like from the, from the, from the woods. So they really trained. They, don't, they didn't have traditional belts, okay? They, they wore the sarong, and their uniforms were black. Why were they black? Because of the Dutch. They were, the pipjak sila really became powerful when their fight, the, the Indonesians had to fight the Dutch for their independence. And so they used pipjak sila and they trained at night. And so the uniforms traditionally of Pechak Sila are black. In our school, we have red and white to signify as a respect for the flag of Indonesia. That's the color of our uniforms. But traditionally, they are black. And we have colored belts, yes. We have white, yellow, green, blue, purple, violet, black, and then red. And then at the end is a white sash. Like come to, you know, the white sash, you go back to white. Yes. Any other questions quickly before I end? Any other? What rank is the red belt? Rank? So this belt here is what I am is called Pilati Muda. So it's after after black belt. Then we have two strikes. Then the third strike is what my instructor has. And after the third strike, you have the third strike. You have to be 50 years old, uh, 40 years old, in order to get the white sash. So they don't even give it to you unless you're 40. So you know, no matter how hard you try. It's not 40 again. Okay. Any, any other questions about Pinchak Sila? Yes. Basic stances. Very good question. So we have what's called Lanka. Lanka are footwork. We have basic stances. So we have front stance. This is our front stance. Okay. It looks kind of like a, like the karate front stance, right? This would be. I'm, I'm not. Don't please don't. <laughs> I'm just knowing what I've seen, right? Pinchak Sila is a little different in where both knees are bent and it's a little, it's like this, two hands out, open hand. Okay? Also in competition, in the competition was called Sila Orohraga. There's no, there's no pads. And pads, only a chest pad. But there's no striking to the face. Why? Because, you know, there's some hadith that talk about 
you know, you shouldn't strike to the face. So in pitch axis lock, there's a, there's a respect for the face. You don't strike to the face in competition. But technique-wise, of course, there's there is lots of techniques to the face. So that's why. And some of the basic stances, kura kura dopan, kura kura naga, OK? Then we have some of the other stances, like sika mina, which is like this. It's like fighting neck from here, side kick here. Then we have sika um, harimau. Harimau means tiger. So sika harimau, here, right, from here. You can come sweet from here. You can come here. Boom. Seek up Um And if somebody goes to get your legs, you come in here. This is another stance. Blanca silang blatang. Here. Blanca silang dupan. Here. You got so many. All right, keep going. So, any other questions? No questions? How long have you been? How long have I been since I was 15 and I'm 38 now? So, <laughs> We have different programs.